We're talking Wolfgang is in the house tonight. Yeah, Wolfgang Poker here. That's uh, that's the guy that we're all here to see. Over $100,000 on the table up for grabs tonight. We're playing 5, 10, 25 with some of the biggest action players in the Midwest, including the legend himself. Ploof is looking around with seven deuce suited in hearts. He Might makes as well. the call. I'm in for $13,000 and we witness one of the wildest hands in poker history. Oh, pocket aces, pocket kings, and pocket aces. Oh, what is going on? Joe, I'm standing up for this. Beginning of this live stream started off terrible. I mean, just brutal hands left and right to the point where we're not even playing the seven deuce game. But I decided to raise it up from the small blind. I make it like $225 course we run into ace king and get a uh, three bet and that's the end of that hand but yeah just trying to make things happen on the stream and keep my v pip up so it's not like 10 percent just to further this point i looked down at ace five of diamonds from the dealer button and decide to three bet ploof all the way up to 675 of course he has queens and rips it in my face for 10k i have to fold but uh now that we got the boring hands out of the way let's get into the fun ones all right first fun hand to note i looked down at the jiggities from the plus two position I decided to raise it up to $75. Caleb has my favorite hand. He's not going anywhere. And he puts in the call. K-Win looks down at 10-8 of hearts and decides this is a great hand to go for a re-raise with. And he makes it $360. Side note, apparently 10-8 suited or offsuit is a popular hand here in Toledo and the Downriver area. Didn't know this earlier, otherwise I probably would have four bet pocket jacks. But instead, I put in the call, bringing in Caleb as well. We're going three ways to a flop. Flop comes ace, ace, nine with two diamonds. So not exactly the best board for pocket jacks, but the action surprisingly checks over to me. Not looking to fall into a trap. Caleb could easily have nines here and K-Win could easily have a hand like ace, king or ace, queen and decide to trap on this board. I decided to check behind bringing in the turn card, which comes another bad card, the king of diamonds, giving another over card to my jacks and bringing in that front door flush draw. Caleb checks it over to K-Win who decides to start betting to the tune of 475. He would be doing this with all of his aces, his flushes, and his kings, so even though I have him beat in this spot and I have a 97% lock on the hand, how am I supposed to know that? I decide to muck my cards. Pretty gross board. King James said, uh, Wolf ain't folding. Well, Wolf just folded. Moving right along to the next hand where I look down at King 8 offsuit from the small blind. Angry Joe raises it up to $75. I'm in the small blind and I put in the call and Ploof puts in the call as well. We're going three ways to a flop, which comes Queen Jack 6 with two clubs. Obviously, I'm never betting on this board, and the action checks around, giving me top pair on the turn. Pretty great card for us. We decide to check in flow, though, over to Angry Joe, who's going to have the range advantage on this board. He decides to bet out almost half pot for $200. Don't look at his hand just yet. He has a lock in this hand, but I don't know that. I put in the call, bringing in a board pairing jack on the river. I decide to check it over to Angry Joe once again. And now he takes his time before putting out a nice size bet of 275. I'm not going to fall into this trap. Somehow, some way, I knew that I was beat, even though I had top pair. Folding my cards, making a great play here, and he shows the goods to me. Ace 10 offsuit. Nice hand, Joe. All right, up until now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, the top right of the screen had the sponsorship blurred out. I didn't want to give him any free promo. But if you now look, 419 Appliances is clear as day. Their phone number is right there. If you guys are in the Toledo area, go check out 419 Appliances. Why am I promoting them? I'm not getting paid for it. Well, you guys are gonna see later on in the video after the stream, I recorded a hand where I may or may not have stacked the owner of this company. So out of the kindness of my heart, we're leaving that sponsorship out there. All right, into the next hand. Finally, a great hand to go to battle with. I look down at Ace King offsuit from the dealer button. Ploof raises up to $200, nice hand Ploof. Corey decides to put in the call and uh, of course, I'm gonna put in the three bet. I decided to make it $750. Finally, a playable hand. I haven't had many up until this point but I still gotta go for a large three bet here with a strong but vulnerable hand like ace king offsuit. Both players know that they are behind, they find the fold, but still nice to drag a pot in the right direction and build some momentum moving on to this next one. All right, fun hand here. Kwin puts in the $50 straddle and uh, Ploof puts in the $100 straddle. Action folds over to me in the cutoff. 10 out of diamonds is a great hand. We're gonna raise it up to $250 and everyone folds except for Ploof who wants to go to battle with queen eight of hearts. Defending his $100 straddle, I don't blame him. The flop comes ace, nine, 10, bang, we flop two pair. Pretty great spot for me. Of course, I'm gonna have a lot of good aces, but I have no idea what Ploof has, so when he checks it over to me, 
Gonna go for a standard C bet of one third. I bet 200 bucks, he folds his cards. No bueno for him, but uh, finally, two hands in a row. Let's freaking go. All right, the poker gods are definitely on my side now. I looked down at pocket jacks on the plus two position and I decided to raise it up to 175. I made it 175 because uh, the $50 straddle was on. Kaywin looks down at pocket kings from the big blind, so I expect a re-raise incoming. Instead, he just puts in the flat call. He wants to get tricky, but he's gotta be careful because Ploof and Corey both come in here with ace four off and nine four suited. So yeah, even though he's playing it tricky, he's gotta be careful on a bunch of flops. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. Queen three deuce rainbow, pretty harmless for pocket kings. He got lucky on that board, but Ploof does have a gutter to the wheel. The action checks over to me and because there's an over card and I'm playing this hand four ways, I decide to check behind, bringing in a nine of spades on the turn. Kaywin decides to check it once again, which is a very interesting play. Of course, Ploof checks, but Corey now, he's done with the checking. He decides to put in a bet. He made a pair. He thinks he has the best hand. He's going for some protection, I bet. But I'm not fooled by that. I decide to put in the call. Pocket jacks, I've underrepped him up until this point. And uh, speaking of underrepping is Kaywin, who decides to spring the trap and makes it 1.1k, utilizing some purple chips. I don't blame him, finally putting in the check raise. Too bad Corey couldn't have just checked there, I might have checked behind, who knows. Either way though, I, uh, I'm actually going to fold my cards here, which is a great play, considering I only have 7% chance to win the hand. Kaywin won this one, he deserves it, but uh, yeah, a lot of scary uh, boards there he could have seen with pocket kings. Alright, we're in the plus 2 position with ace-queen offsuit. K9 in the plus one decides to raise it up to $175 over a straddle. And now I'm going to come in for a three bet. I decide to make it 400 bucks. Ploof is going absolutely nowhere in the third blind. He decides to call for an additional $375. Only had $25 out there, but don't tell him that. He wanted to defend that $25 with a 7-4 off. K9 is going nowhere with the pocket tens. A little bit of a better hand. And uh, we are going three ways to a flop, which comes queen, jack, three with two spades. Ploof surprisingly has nothing on this board, just seven high. He's gonna check it over to K9. K9's not gonna bet into me. And with top pair, top kicker, let's go for around half the size of the pot. There's a lot of draws out there, like the spade flush draw, some straight draws, and uh, yeah, just some random hands that could make two pair on the turn. So I definitely don't wanna check behind here. I go for about a 625. K9 with the pocket tens decides to put in the call. And I think this is an interesting play. Sure, he could back into like some sort of straight draw, but he doesn't have a spade in his hand. And uh, yeah, he blocks a few of my bluffs. So him putting the call here is a little interesting, but I'm not complaining, 625 most likely coming into my stack. And we see a somewhat clean turn card, which comes as seven of diamonds. When K9 checks it over to me for a second time, at this point, I'm putting him on any random assortment of hands. He'd have a worse queen, like king queen, queen 10, maybe even queen nine. He could also have a lot of the spade draws, and then he could have any of the straight draws. He has two tens in his hand. He easily could have 10, nine or king 10. So I definitely think a large bet is the right size to make it. And I size up here to $1,700 into the 2.5K pot. Around two thirds the size of the pot, and I definitely like my bet sizing there. Puts K9 in a tough spot, but ultimately he makes the right fold. And we're taking down that 4.2K pot. Let's go. Good fold by K9 here. Big pot, a pot that was well needed by Wolfgang yeah. to get back on the right uh, path here. All right, at this point, we added on for an additional $5,000. So at this point, we're in for 13K, and we have around 9.7K in my stack. I'm down over $3,000. We're going to go to battle here and try to win some of that back. I look down at 6-5 of hearts from the dealer button, and uh, Ploof raises it up to $300 with a beautiful hand, king-queen suited. I don't blame him in the slightest. Corey decides to put in the call with queen-jack suited. I'm on the button. I'm going nowhere. I could go for a raise, but that just opens the action up again, so I decide to come in for the 300 bucks, which brings in pretty much everybody else at the table. We're going six ways to the flop, 1.8K out there, and I'd love to see a six on the board, which is exactly what the dealer puts out there. 866, bang, we flopped three of a kind. How does that come? Hopefully no one has the K6 in their hand with a better kicker. And uh, Angry Joe has pocket 10. So interestingly, he did not decide to raise that pre. And said now he's going to see all undercards on the flop and decide to bet out for 600 bucks. Caleb makes two pair, but wisely decides to fold, which is uh, a great fold by him. I think normally he'd put in the call. But extremely multi-way, he makes a great fold. Now I'm at an interesting point. I could go for a raise, which kind of exposes the strength of my hand, or I could just put in the call, which puts me on any random assortment of hands like pocket sevens, ace eight, maybe a, a straight draw like seven nine or seven five. 
So I like just to put in the call, which will hopefully put more money in on the turn in the river. But when an overcard comes in on the turn, Angry Joe decides to check it over to me. And when he checks it over to me, I know he's scared of me having a six. So I think a bet here will just get him to fold a lot of the time. And I decide to check behind, looking to see a clean river card. And hopefully I can get another bet in here for around $2,000. But another overcard comes to his tens, a jack of diamonds. He's not gonna bet out into me. He decides to check it over to me for a second time. Now we're obviously not checking back here on the river. I'm closing the action, right? So I can either go for a small bet of around $1,000. I can go for a medium bet of around 2K, or I could overbet the pot and make it look like either a bluff, like a missed straight draw, or maybe a missed spade draw on the turn, or nothing. So I could either make it look like a bluff or I can make it look like the nuts. I decided to bet out for 3.5K. I overbet the pot, trying to put him in a tough spot with any assortment of hands like an eight. Obviously pocket tens are in a weird spot here. I wish the board would have run out a little bit cleaner, like a deuce and a three or something, but at the end of the day, my overbet did not get called. He might've called me for around a grand, but how am I supposed to know his hand? At the end of the day though, we're taking down a 6.5K pot which is my largest pot of the night. So uh, definitely feels pretty good to win that one. And we're almost about even at this point. All right, we have around 12K in my stack. Remember, I'm in for 13K. I look down at King Jack of Diamonds from the hijack. Corey puts in the call for the straddle of 50 bucks, and I decide to re-raise it 4X up to $200. Angry Joe decides to put in the call for $195 more. Kwin puts in the call. Surprisingly, Poof puts in the call with 10 for offsuit. And Corey defends that $50 and puts in the call as well, leading us to a flop which comes 10-8 deuce rainbow. When the action checks over to me, I actually decide to go for a pretty large bet here of $525. It's around two thirds the size of the pot. And at this point, my VPIP wasn't exactly too high. So I'm gonna have all of the jacks, queens, kings, and aces here. If anyone's calling me here, I expect it only to be with like top pair with a good kicker or random assortments of sets like eights, deuces, maybe 10-8 and uh, ace 10. So given the fact that I have some backdoor draws, I kind of like my bet here. I wish it was a little bit less multi-way, maybe just heads up or three ways. So maybe some checking behind here would be smart in the long run, but I decided to bet out for $525. Angry Joe puts in the call with his uh, up and down straight draw. Corey puts in the call as well. He has a gutter to the straight. I have the jack though, so I kind of block him. And he has a backdoor flush draw, so uh, definitely a speculative call by Corey, but he's a good player and knows what he's doing. And he puts in the call, making what he might think is the best hand on the turn when the queen of hearts peels off, but it actually gives Angry Joe the nuts. He turns the straight. Of course, he's gonna check it over to me. And I decide to check back now with my additional outs. Any ace or any nine would give me the best hand. And uh, we see instead the five of diamonds on the river. Joe doesn't look too interested in this pot. He's trying to play a cool, but of course he's interested. He has the nuts on this board and he bets out for 1.1K. Corey decides to put in the call with his top pair. And uh, I of course get out of the way. Interesting pot here though. And uh, 4.6K is going angry Joe's way. Hopefully that uh, makes him happy. Angry Joe is going to roll over the nuts. And Wolfgang is going to be very happy to see that he did not make that play. All right, I'm in the straddle for 50 bucks, and I look down at pocket sixes. Ploof in the small blind raises up to 300. K9 decides to put in the call with queen at jack suited, and I'm going nowhere with pocket sixes because, of course, we're going to flop a set. Ace, jack, six, bang! We flop bottom set. Ploof decides to check. K9 checks it over to me. With bottom set, I unblock them from having all the strong hands like ace-jack, ace-king, ace-queen, queen-jack, like K9 does have. So I decide to bet out into this $900 pot for a small sizing of $325. Ploof is going to get out of the way with his 10 high. K9's going nowhere with his middle pair in a backdoor diamond draw. He puts in the call. We're off to the turn in a 1.6K pot, which comes a seven of clubs. And of course, K9 checks it over to me with second pair. And when he calls me on the flop, I'm putting him on any ace or any jack. For that reason, I kind of like a large sizing here. I want to start piling money in and try to rip it in by the river. So I decided to bet out for $900 into the 1.6K pot, which is in between half and two thirds. He's not going to oblige and put in more money shipping it my way. He folds his uh, second pair. But yeah, it seems the turntables are turning here. 
we are uh, adding more chips to our stack, moving right along into the next hand. All right, now I'm gonna go over a few fun hands from this stream that you guys cannot miss. I had to include them in here, even though I may or may not be involved in any of them. It's a fun spot here when Kaywin opens it up to 350 with King Queen offsuit. Caleb, who's been splashing around left and right, he's definitely a fun player, has around 18K in his stack, and he looks down at ace-king offsuit and decides to three bet it to 1.2K. Angry Joe's in the straddle with the exact same hand. He decides to put in the call. Looking around with seven deuce suited in hearts. He Might makes as well. the call. Might as well. Ploof, you are my hero. Don't tell Ploof that though. He's in the hijack with seven deuce suited. So it's not exactly the worst hand in poker, but it's pretty dang close. And he puts in the call. And of course, flops the best hand. Queen nine deuce. Had to put this in there. Seven deuce suited is going to crack ace king offsuit in two spots. It actually improves on the river with a pair of sevens. Two pair. Oh, man. For Enrique Iglesias, a.k.a. Ploof. And he's going to scoop down that 6.5K pot, going for a little bit of value on that river. Had to include that fun hand. And it just shows what a fun player uh, Ploof is, playing the 7 do suited for uh, a ton of money, honestly. Okay, this next one is the hand of the night. We can already see that Ben has pocket aces and raises it up to $75. Ben's a pretty good player, hasn't been playing many hands, just uh, solidly 3-betting and uh, folding. So definitely a great player. He looks down at pocket aces. Angry Joe has uh, $325. So if you haven't experienced the Angry Joe nickname up until this point, unless a cooler happens here, he's going to show his true colors. But then we look over at the cutoff. Oh, pocket aces, pocket kings, and pocket aces. Oh, what is going on? Angry Joe stuck I'm standing in the up for this. Hold on. Angry Joe stuck I am in getting the out middle. of my chair for this one. Caleb has pocket aces. Are you kidding me? Is this a graphic error? Aces versus aces versus kings. Raise to 75, a three bet to 325. And Caleb, who's been three and four betting light, now picks up a great hand. He four bets it to $1,000. When the action's back over to Ben, he's going to rip his entire stack in for 5.1k. And huge props for Angry Joe just not snap calling this all in here. He's definitely showing that he's a great player. And uh, ultimately, though, he does find a call. It's pretty impossible to fold King's preflop. And, you know, this is Joe's taking his time. I like the fact that he's, oh, he's all in. He's all in. Oh, I don't, he's I don't all blame in. him. You can't blame him. I mean, Kings Caleb's going to snap aces call. aces versus aces. Oh, my Lord. The action is telling him that one of these players does have aces. Little does he know that he's up against two sets of aces. So at the same time, even though he's in a tough spot, you know, if a king comes, there's no outs for aces unless the board runs out to be a straight. When all the money gets in here, Angry Joe's all in, Caleb's all in, it's almost a $28,000 pot, which is the largest pot in Live at the Reserve Poker Club history. At the end of the day, the aces are going to chop up Angry Joe's money. 28k pot here though this is a pretty insane one aces versus aces versus kings let me know down in the comments if you guys have seen anything similar even if it's like kings versus kings versus queens i personally have been playing for a lot of years and have never seen anything like this so pretty cool that uh, all the viewers on the live stream were able to experience this as well all right that wraps up the live stream i ended up getting out for around twelve thousand dollars so i'm down a thousand dollars at the moment but don't worry the guys play off stream so we have a few hands to go over here because we're playing a 12k effective and look down at ace 4 offsuit and decide to raise it up to $150 over the $50 straddle and a, a middle position limp and a low jack limp. Both players put in the call bringing us off to the flop which comes 10-3 deuce giving me a gutter to the straight. Middle position and the low jack both check it over to me. I decide to check behind. This isn't a board that's going to connect too well with my preflop raising range. And good thing we do check because we see the five of diamonds on the turn. Bang! We turn the wheel. Unfortunately though, the action decides to check it over to me again. Isn't great news because I expect a lot of pocket pairs, a lot of sets, and a lot of top pair, top kicker to go for a bet on this board. But when it checks it over to me, I'm gonna bet out for $300, just looking to get some value against maybe some uh, straight draw pairs and sets. Unfortunately, everybody finds the fold, but uh, pretty great to win the first hand of the night off stream. Next hand, I look down at Ethan's favorite hand from the low jack. I decide to open it up to $150 over another $50 straddle. The cutoff decides now to 3-bet me to $450. I think by the book, this is a fold. Pocket 4s are just too low in our range, but we're playing off stream. I want to have some fun with the guys, and I decide to put in the call, looking to see a 4 on the flop, which is definitely not what we get. It comes Jack-9-5 Rainbow. I decide to check it over to the cutoff, which I would do with any of my strong hands, including my sets, straight draws, and top pair. He now decides to bet out for $300, which is a standard GTO, one-third the size of the pot bet. 
but I've been in the lab, I've been getting some coaching, and I know this is a board that's gonna be pretty scary for a lot of his strong hands. For instance, pocket kings, pocket queens, ace king, ace queen. I mean, some of them are made hands, some of them are not. So if I go for a raise here, it's gonna get him to fold a lot of his two overcard type hands. Additionally, if he has a hand like uh, queens or kings, and I decide to check raise here, he's gonna put me on a hand like jacks, nines, or fives. There's not really too many draws out here other than 10, eight and queen 10, and there's not really any flush draws out there. So I think a raise looks super strong. I'm not really worried if I get called because I'm gonna barrel the turn in the river. So yeah, 2023, we're trying out some new fun things for the vlog. I decided to go over the check raise and I make it small because I don't have to go big. I'm representing strength when I decide to check raise to $725. Definitely not something you would have seen me done last year. But we're mixing it up, we're trying some new plays. And the cutoff now decides to put in the call. So I said I'm not worried, but uh, I am pretty worried at this point. When he decides to call my raise, he definitely doesn't have ace, king, ace, queen. He has for sure an over pair or maybe a hand like ace, jack, or king, jack. Gonna need to put a lot more pressure. The turn comes a blank. It's a three of hearts. If I had a set here, I just want to start piling more money in. If I had a draw, I'd probably mix between betting and checking. So when I decide to bet out here for $1,100, less than half the size of the pot, he mucks his cards. And of course, you know, I'm gonna show the table I got a bluff through. I had fourth pair. Pocket fours were probably no good on that board, but that's not how poker works. You gotta make it to a showdown. That's not what he did, and we're gonna get rewarded with that uh, 2.4K pot. Let's go. A few more hands to go. I look down at ace queen offsuit from under the gun, and I raise it up to $25. Middle position decides to three bet me to $225, and the player in the third blind decides to put in the call. I put in the call as well. This is a hand that could be a good four bet candidate, but I just did the check raise with the pocket fours. I wanna play some hands not as fast. I decided to put in the call. We're gonna go three ways off to a flop, which comes 10, nine, four with two spades. I have two over cards of a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw, and I decide to check, and the action checks around, giving me more equity with the six of spades coming on the turn. When the action checks around on the flop, the third blind now decides to bet out for $425. I'm pretty sure he's blind at this point. So yeah, I have uh, two over cards and I have the ace of spades in my hand. Could go for a raise over a blind bet, but instead I just put in the call. If he checks the river, I'm gonna put him to the test and uh, put out a large bet. That's exactly what happens. When I put in the call, we're off to the river in a 1.5K pot, which comes the five of hearts and now he slows down and checks. When he blind bets the turn and checks the river, he's pretty much capping himself at one pair. A lot of things to be scared out there for one pair. There's a possible straight, a possible flush. I could have any assortment of two pair and sets. So when he checks it over to me and I only have ace high, I gotta blow him off any of his one pair type of hands. And I decide that the price to make it is $1,200 into the $1,500 pot. I almost made it pot. I think this gets him to fold a lot of his one pair type hands, unless he has like the best 10, like ace 10, or king 10, but unfortunately he does in fact put in the call, which is terrible news. And even worse than hearing call is seeing the hand he called me with, six eight of diamonds. He literally had just a pair of sixes. And later on, someone at the table told me that's not the guy to bluff. Well, I guess that's the downside of traveling and playing poker for a living on YouTube. You just don't know the players you're playing against. I think this bluff would have worked against like 90% of the players out there in the world. But against this guy, he makes an insane call against me, one of the tighter players at the table. And that 4K pot is getting shipped his way. No worries though, we're looking down at the jiggities. Two hands to go here in this session. I'm in the third blind. The button ploof, he raises up to $100. The big blind puts in the call. I'm not gonna let that fly. I decide to three bet them up to $400. And both players put in the call. Because why would they fold? They put in some money pre. They wanna match it and defend it. They put in the call, leading us off to a flop which comes 754 rainbow. Now remember earlier when uh, I told you I left the sponsorship in the top right corner because I may or may not have stacked the person who owns that company. Well, here we go, this is the hand. The person in the big blind is the owner of that company, 419 Appliances, and he jams all in for $1,300. I check my hand once again, I have pocket jacks. I'm going nowhere, but it is a weird spot. Ploof has position and uh, he has a lot of chips, definitely has me covered and I'm uh, playing 11 and a half thousand effective. So putting in a call here is a little bit sketch. Raising probably is the best play, but I'm taking a shot in this bigger game here so I don't necessarily always make the right moves. I just put in the call, luckily, few Ploof gets out of the way. So that means we are going heads up to a run out which comes the 10 of spades, followed by the eight of spades. I turn over my pocket jacks. The owner of that company mucks his cards. We're gonna take down that nearly $4,000 pot. 
But no worries, man. I hope uh, some people call you about your appliance company. But we're going to take down that 3.7k pot, leading us to the last hand of the night, king nine offsuit from the straddle. Middle position raises it up to $150. Two players put in the call. I call as well, leading us off to a flop, which comes king queen four with two hearts. I decided to check in the action checks all the way around to the button who bets out for $225. When I call with an offsuit king and we make top pair, I can't be folding for $225. I put in the call leading us off to the turn which comes the four of diamonds, pairing the board, $1,000 in the middle. And of course, I'm gonna check it over to the aggressor on the flop who decides to bet out for $500. At this point, he has a flush draw or a better king. Don't really think he's going to be betting twice here with any worse hand like queens. So yeah, definitely a weird spot, but I'm not going anywhere. I decided to put in the call, bring in the queen of spades on the river. Really shouldn't change too much. We now have three pairs, kings, queens, and fours. And I decided to check it over to him once again. He decides to check behind, which is interesting. I decided to show my hand and he mucks. He is a lone king. Can you beat that? Hussein? <laughs> I give him the first bag sticker. Yeah. <laughs> we got to a river. Oh. oh no. Surprisingly, he had a worse hand, so I guess he had busted hearts and didn't want to go for a bet on the river. Another bet there would have definitely got the job done. I wasn't going to call, but nice to wrap up the last hand of the night with a 2K win. With that last hand in the books, we rack up our chips and head over to the cage, exchanging them for a ton of cold hard cash. All right, you guys, that wraps up that crazy 5, 10, 25, 50, even the 100 and 200 got on at some points, as you saw. We got in for 3K, but that was just a formality. After that, it was match the stack 100%, topped up 5K, topped up 5K. I was in for 13. At our lowest, we were down 6,000, but you know we weren't going to take the L here in Toledo. Got out for 13,400. And seventeen dollars. So profit of four hundred and seventeen dollars in eight hours doesn't sound like very much, considering the stakes. But huge win, considering we were going to lose six thousand dollars. As always, really appreciate the support, you guys. If you like me taking shots in bigger games this year, be sure to let me know down below. Drop a subscribe if you're new. Good luck on the felt, you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.